Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to the NTD Racing Speed Shop. This truck right behind me is named Lefty. We just got done racing it at the Baja 1000. We beat the crap out of it. We didn't finish, but we got some really good data points from some of the things that we tested while we were there. And one of them is this thing right here, and that is a Starlink. And I am a self-proclaimed, besides being a fabricator, I'm a self-proclaimed SpaceX and space nerd. I love everything about them and I especially love Starlink. And as I talk to people, I realize that many people don't understand what it is or just how amazing it is. So I'm gonna give you some facts that are gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna show you how we made this mount and then I'm gonna ask you for some help. There is something I really need your help to get done. Let's go ahead and first take a look at Starlink. All right, so what is Starlink? Starlink is owned by Elon Musk's company called SpaceX. They launched really expensive rockets. To pay for the rockets, they started up this service called Starlink. To date, they have launched 6,014 satellites that are still in orbit and working, and their plan is to go as many as 40,000 satellites that are basically providing internet for the entire globe. Um, and so they send you some hardware. There's been a couple different iterations of the Starlink, you know, terminals that you can purchase. And this is the newest one. And it is absolutely amazing for the off-roading, the RV, the airplane, the boat, you name it. The communities that basically are running off of batteries and don't necessarily have, say, 115 and 60 hertz power like you would get from plugging into your wall. So here's what you get when you open the box, which is the very simple Starlink box. First, you get what is a the antenna. We'll talk about this thing in a second. And this is not what it looks like when it shows up. I'll tell you why here in a second. But the other things that are inside, this is the general mount that is on the bottom of the Starlink and it allows you to basically hook it onto a pole or something like that. But that wasn't good enough for us in the off-roading world where we were gonna beat the crap out of this thing at the Baja 1000. It comes with a power source. Now this power source, basically what it does is it says that it takes in either between 100 to 240 volts. That is everything in the whole globe. And it takes between 50 and 60 Hertz. So any outlet you plug this thing into with any adapter, this is gonna work anywhere on the globe. What comes out the bottom is gonna be in this case, 30 volts. Now, if you look at the back of the Starlink terminal, what this thing requires is between 12 and 48 volts. How does it get there? You have a cord that they provide you inside the Starlink kit. On both ends of the cord is a connector that looks like this. One end connects into the power source, and the other end, which looks exactly the same, plugs in to the very bottom of the Starlink. Now, this cord is just sending a DC voltage in, across the cord. So since it's both the exact same on both ends, I cut it. And when you splice it open, here's what you get. You got one ground and you got one power and it can be between 12 and 48 volts. Well, your car is probably 99.9% a 12 volt system, meaning that when you're, the car is on and running, you're probably running about 14 volts. That is perfect for this. So what we did is we cut it in half and now we have two different power sources that we can wire in and we can put one on our car and one of our, on our race truck and one on the chase truck. All right, I'm gonna show you this here in a second, but first we're gonna talk about the mounting system that we use and that is called Pivot. So let's talk about Pivot and what that is. And that is a full system. You can think from all the way from the interface to whatever you want it to stick to, to the device, it does the entire thing. And so you can kind of think about that two different ways. How does it first interface with whatever you want to connect it to, whether that be a vehicle, a motorcycle, an airplane, a boat, you name it, you can do it with a Pivot. And you can kind of see, I just have some examples here of some of the things that we use in the truck. This would be something that you could really quickly modify and go ahead and connect it to like a tube or something like that inside the truck. And then you have what's the equivalent of a RAM mount. And then the RAM mount at that point can be adjusted and go right to the pivot interface. 
This one right here would be like a more of a permanent to like a roll cage or something like that. There's even a place where you could put a fastener in there if you wanted to. We tend to use these a lot on the dashboard of our truck. We can basically bolt this thing right to the dashboard on the other side. We have the, uh, the pivot interface. You can have a short one. You can have this longer one. Uh, and then also, uh, just like I use in my A350 when I go to work in the airlines, you have the suction cup in an industry that does not tolerate any kind of failure this is exactly what we use in the aircraft these suction cups are just not going to come off of whatever they're stuck to as long as they're obviously clean uh, and then on the other side you can have this this mount where you can orient it any way that you want inside the aircraft or inside the car inside the motorcycle whatever it is lock this thing down and then it just isn't going to move anywhere that's where it's going to stay and that is the part you can think of that interfaces to whatever vehicle you're using check out their website there are so many more either for vehicles you can do knee boards you can have it on your hip with some kind of connection on a backpack they're tethered you name it they have all kinds of things the other side of this is the part that your device is in so this is what i see used a lot in the, at least in the airline industry is some kind of a case that protects like an ipad for example you can see the case encompasses all the way around it's not going to let any fragile parts touch the ground in case it, it falls and then also has the the interface for the connection uh, on the back we use the large ipads we use the small ipads and then we also use surfaces there are so many different uses like say for iphones androids you name it the other cool part is is this piece right here which is really the secret sauce of pivot and how this super durable piece right here now interfaces with all of these where it slides into the slot here and it locks itself in place and it is not going to go anywhere until you push this little lever right here and release it and it goes into all of the different uh, devices so once you have this mount mounted wherever it is you don't need to change that to put something else in there and you can just transfer what you have a lot of times we'll have the ipad on there for navigation and then when i go to tune the engine on the car i'm going to switch over to the surface so i can be running hp tuner for example in the car so what we wanted to do was see if we could make this amazing piece right here interface with a starlink so this is what i came up with they sent us a starlink they said see what you can do put on your truck we don't make one of these yet but you know we're not saying no and so they sent me this Starlink. And so in about 24 hours, because we're leaving the next day for Baja, this is what we made. It's sandwiched aluminum on both sides. It's got like some kind of polyurethane thing that we glued through the center. And I think it's glued on there permanently, but whatever. Um, and then on the back, we took an old pivot case. We cut it out and we just bolted it to the thing. And uh, I'll tell you what, this ran Baja without a problem. We were live streaming with this thing and it lasted in probably the worst environment that you can test any piece of equipment in. So we sent some pictures to, of us to the uh, the pivot guys. We said, we like it. We think this is amazing. They said, what did you, where'd you guys get that piece? We're like, well, we just cut off one of the old cases and bolted it on there. They're like, well, how about try this? And then they sent us this thing. And how beautiful is that? This is a piece of aluminum. It's all metal. It's going to make this thing even more durable. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and bolt this thing on the back here. And then let me show you one more piece that I had to modify to make this thing just work perfect with our truck. All right. So this is the back of our race truck. This is where we hooked up the Starlink. This is where we ran the power and those kinds of things. This would be a normal pivot mount. And this one, while super durable, we found that once we put the weight on it, it just started giving and started moving a little bit. So since I have a plasma table, I was able to cut out just something that looked exactly like the top of this thing and it clips right in there. So this would be something that I don't, I'm not sure if they've got just yet. This would be something they would have to consider to make this system work and you know, would require some kind of production. So that brings us to the other question. Man, I really like that mount on there. That is gonna be so trick. Let's go ahead and get it on the truck. All right, that thing is on there. It is not going anywhere. So you could kind of imagine, I mean, this is what, I'm, the, I'm not the engineers that do this kind of stuff. This is, uh, I would say, kind of some janky engineering. But if you put the guys who, uh, who do this for a living on this and imagine the case system that they could make, you know, that's kind of like their iPad cases, it would really be next level. So that brings me to the part where I need some help. 
All right, so here is the big question. Is it worth pivot making this case for the mass market? Let me give you an example of just how well I think Starlink works. In my house, I get about 60 megs per second as far as a download speed. And the Starlink in the middle of the desert, we were getting about 200. It's literally three times faster than my home internet in the United States. Anywhere on the globe is what you're gonna get on an RV, you could probably put on a motorcycle, you could put it on a backpack. There's all kinds of use cases for the Starlink. Now there are other people that are making mounts for Starlink, but you know what? I think that they're on the surface of vehicles and other types of surfaces. They're either using magnets and I find them using suction cups. And I think that this mount system by pivot in all cases is superior. So in your opinion, and if you don't mind, please put it in the comments, yes or no. Is there value in Pivot going all in with their engineering department to build a streamlined, incredibly durable case that goes with the Starlink kit, maybe even modifying their mount to make it a little bit more rigid and also interface easily with whatever vehicle that you have. And if you let me know that, then I can kind of go to the Pivot guys and say, hey, I think that there is value and there's absolutely value. This is gonna to totally change the world of overlanding. It's gonna change the world of boating. It's just amazing what you get when you're just, you never lose connection. You're like at home, no matter where you are. I think it's amazing. Anyway, we make a lot of videos like this. If you like this one, maybe check out this one here. Also, we'll be making some really cool videos, more coming up next week. We hope to see you then. Take care of yourself.